So here you are at your job. Yes, you. And it's good, most days. But some days you wonder, am I in the right career for me? Is this what I actually want to be doing the rest of my life? Whoa, those are some huge questions. And in my experience coaching a lot of women, the questions are so big, they feel too overwhelming to answer. So they just stay in the back of our mind as we continue to clock in and clock out of the okay, probably misaligned job that we have. So today I'm going to simplify this question for you and pull the curtain back to show you behind the scenes when I was asking these questions myself. If you want help making a confident career choice and confident decisions in every realm of your life, subscribe to this channel. And stay tuned to the end of this video to hear how you can get a free chapter of my decision-making book. I remember sophomore year at university. There was this distinct moment. I was sitting in one of the first few rows of a mid-size lecture hall with my red notebook open to one of the first few pages because red is the color of science. If you disagree, fight it out in the comments. I was in the first few rows not because I was so enthused about chemistry, but because I found it hard to concentrate. I would watch the professor and think, I wanna be up there. I'd so much rather be speaking than memorizing these equations. I wondered why chemistry was required. I'm never gonna have to use this specific knowledge in my future career. <laughs> Classic eight Enneagram. At the time, I thought I wanted to be a doctor. Chemistry class was just one of the many checkboxes I would have to check on my way to that goal. But if you zoomed out a little bit, I wasn't so sure about this doctor pathway. Just the previous year, I was a dance major at the University of Boulder, Colorado. And two years after that moment in the chemistry lecture hall, I would be accepting my place in a PhD program for positive psychology. Fast forward a few years later, I'm a business owner, an author, a speaker, and I'm making YouTube videos. Look at where you came from, look at you now. So while I love what I do, the journey to get here looked much more like questioning how to change careers when you're lost or how to confidently change careers many times over. And I know you're asking yourself the same question, how to find meaningful work, knowing if your current job is right for you. So thanks to some midnight reflection, it is 12.27 a.m. How do you decide what to do with your life? How do you choose a career path that's aligned with your authentic self? I think I once and for all got to the bottom of how to make a confident career decision. <laughs> This started with an unexpected prompt to create some space. How can I summarize what I do? My mind wants to find the title. I'm a speaker, period, or I'm a YouTube creator or whatever it is and have that be the main thing. I kept finding that one title just couldn't grasp it all. The tangible label is still unclear and maybe unimportant. I was getting closer to the second stage of finding clarity when I was honing in on what my purpose might be. At least a meaning that organized everything I did. Something expansive. It's something touching the lives of many. Still, even if you have found your skill or your purpose or your meaning, there are so many ways to implement that into the world. Through speaking on stages, through writing a book, coaching clients, my YouTube channel. So although it may seem like I was getting less clear, just as you may feel like you're getting less clear as you create space for big questions in your life, maybe taken a career quiz like I shared on my channel a few weeks ago and read through a list of 5, 10, 20 different careers that fit your skill set and passion. And maybe your initial reaction was, well, this isn't helpful. Tell me the one thing. Tell me the right career for me. At some point, because you have created space, it clicks like it did for me at 12 a.m. I'm starting to believe at 12.35 a.m. Maybe there's not one thing. I think we all just have to show up as ourselves and it almost doesn't matter what we're doing. Suddenly where I used to feel scattered started to make sense. It gets to a certain point where there's a whole pool of passions or purposes or careers or labels or hats that we can choose to put on and be very authentic in all of those different options. And so it's not about finding the option, the right one. Maybe it's about finding the good enough, the one that we're called toward in that moment, in that season, and then showing up there as authentically as possible. My bit of clarity was cluing me in to an observation that will give myself and you so much more freedom and empowerment in choosing your career. Maybe it's not so much about finding the titles, the purposes, and it's more so about finding the pool of purpose and then choosing one that calls us and showing up there as our authentic selves, maybe. <laughs> And then to get the answer we're really seeking, what is the one career, what do I do next, what do I do now, use the authentic filter. So there are some things that like we can filter through as our authentic selves or our strengths or our interests. You will feel, just as I felt, that we are called towards some of these careers more than others. 
Furthermore, we are definitely called away from some of the careers, even in that pool. It's like I was realizing in that chemistry lecture hall. It maybe eases the pressure of having to figure it out, find the job, the career. Maybe it's more so do whatever you're called to do or do whatever is in your life right now and then just show up as our authentic selves doing that thing. Which brings us to step three, admitting your direction. How to find aligned work. Those insights of clarity you had about what your pool of career choices are. Choose an option that feels good enough for you in this moment. Take your best guess. What it feels like I'm deciding about is do I do YouTube or not? Do I just focus on reaching out to speaking events and my membership and my one-on-one -on -one and the book? Like I have plenty going on. Do I want to be doing the YouTube thing? But YouTube is also marketing for those things. It's like this balance between do I take the advice of just focusing on one thing or do I take the broad approach? Both ways work. So it's a matter of what way feels best for me. Because of all the space and the clarity I already had up until that point, it allowed me to have an aha moment of choosing a good enough direction. I think the broad way at the moment. So to play with YouTube and see what happens. If I love it, keep doing it and write myself a permission slip right now that if I'm not loving it, I can stop at any time. Same for you. Try something on, give it a fair shot, but if you don't love it, you don't have to keep doing it. <laughs> Shift and try something different. Which means my next step was to take action. And here I am. This direction not only led me here in front of the camera again with more confidence and assurance that this is where I'm meant to be for now, it also helped me to resolve a decision I alluded to last week. Do I buy a camera and a microphone as I'm starting to vlog? I have decided to purchase the camera. My action is to continue showing up on YouTube, not because it's my title, but because it feels good to get into the flow state I get into when I edit and prep for these videos. And a clue in that this action is really feeling authentic is that I'm not tied up and expecting to have a certain number of views or subscribers because I've taken this action. Though I'd still be very excited if you chose to subscribe. I very naturally stepped into the next step to trust the ride, which is not to say doubt never appears. In fact, even last night, I thought about not showing up to film this video. At one point tonight, I was questioning whether to do this work. But because I had gone through the first steps of this decision-making process, just like when you go through all of these steps to make your decision, I could lean on that foundation. I could lean on the confidence that I was making this action from a grounded place. Working through that bit of discomfort, trusting even when doubt was present, was just enough of a nudge to get me out of a doubt spiral and into a state of flow. It is 9.04. I just got done prepping for filming. I noticed this and I celebrated. I'm celebrating right now and feeling the feel good because I was just in flow. I don't usually <laughs> work till 9 p.m. It felt good. I don't want to do this always, but I really got in the flow and I like this work. I like researching what people are looking for on YouTube and how I can make a valuable video. I'm excited to film tomorrow and I'm excited to edit. And so that tells me to keep going and I'm basking in this celebration phase, just like I talk about in my book, because if I don't pause to celebrate this moment right now, then I may forget in the future that I really do enjoy this work. The answer my younger self was looking for in that chemistry lecture hall is freeing and expansive because there's an entire pool of right for you. It means you're not crazy for changing careers. You don't have to be hard on yourself for making a wrong decision one year ago when you entered that job. And yes, you will find fulfilling work even after getting laid off from your dream position. Plus, with step seven, a part of this process just as much as any of the other six steps, you can always begin again. So create your space to ask those big questions, maybe bring on the support of a coach, join my membership program where a lot of individuals are asking this very question. Notice when those hints of clarity appear. And as you narrow down that vast list of options, take your best guess. Choose a direction that feels good enough for now. Take one action step which is maybe just showing up in the camera one more time. Trust the inevitable ebbs and flows that come on the other side of that decision without sabotaging the decision itself. Ride the waves, and when you feel that sweet moment of bliss, celebrate, and then begin again. Speaking of begin again, we have another video coming next week about time management, perfectly placed during a holiday week, where I've heard some of you struggle to take time off. So if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. <laughs> If you've made it this far, please give this video a like and comment below to be part of the Yes And community. And in gratitude for you showing up here, I gift you chapter one of my book, Ready Enough, where I dive far deeper into this concept of authentic decision making so you can make confident, authentic decisions in any area of your life. And that's it for this week.